Welcome to ECU Flash Training Part 12. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with our acceleration enrichment and our deceleration fuel cut. We're going to be finding the acceleration enrichment is going to be applying a momentary increase in the fuel delivered to our engine when we have rapid throttle changes, where air mass is going to be changed very quickly, and the deceleration fuel cut is going to be when we want to shut off our injector as we're in lift throttle conditions. There's going to be a lot to cover, so let's jump into this video so we can check out working with both of these features. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our acceleration fuel enrichment and our deceleration fuel cut and our EVO 8 and EVO 9 ECUs. So if we go up here to the ROM documents, I have open here a EVO 9 and an EVO 8 file. Now one's going to be speed density, the other here is mass airflow based. Now when we're talking about our Excel and decel tables, we're going to find whether it's going to be in a 3D VE speed density style file or a mass airflow in the Tefer V7s what we'll have to work with in program is gonna be identical. Now, if we're talking about the different generations here, so EVO 9 versus EVO 8, there's gonna be small differences in the tables that we're gonna go over in this video. Um, it's just gonna be what's defined in the actual files with XML code. Both of these different generations of ECUs probably have the exact same tables to work with and to dial in, but we'll find that only some of it has been defined and most important things that we actually have to work with, um, that's gonna be what we have available here to actually edit and make changes to. So before we jump in here to our raw metadata and talk about the specific tables we need to edit and how we need to edit them, let's talk about the concepts of what the actual acceleration enrichment is going to be as well as the acceleration fuel cut so we know what to kind of what we're working with and how we should make our changes and apply things just so it's going to be uh, making a lot more sense if we're trying to visualize how this is actually going to be working. So if we're talking about our acceleration enrichment, this is going to be providing the ECU a way to add additional injector pulse width against the rate of change in our throttle movement. So we know that our fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. We've talked about this equation pretty extensively here in the course. So if we're registering, let's say we're in cruising conditions, we're at 20% throttle, 3000 RPM, we're registering our air mass or we're calculating what the, uh, the air mass is going to be if we're in speed density mode, and we know what the target air fuel is going to be. In this case, cruising, it would be closed loop, it would be 14.7 to 1. So knowing all of that, we convert that into a fuel mass, and then we would go through the injector data information, convert that into injector pulse width. And what we should find if everything's gonna be dialed in properly is that we are hitting that target air fuel we're requesting, which is 14.7. So let's say in a perfect world, everything's happy, it's hitting the target air fuel, and we're running along at a, at a nice uh, stoichiometric air fuel ratio. Now, if we start to give it some throttle input, let's say we go from 20% throttle to 50% throttle, that rate of change in our throttle movement, that's gonna allow a sudden burst of airflow or air mass into our engine. And if we don't increase our injector pulse width to compensate for that momentary change in our airflow or air mass, we're gonna have a lean stumble. And it's going to only again be for maybe a tenth, two tenths, three tenths of a second at most. And it's enough to disturb the way the vehicle drives pretty significantly. And that's what the acceleration enrichment is gonna be for. It's gonna be adding fuel against the rate of change in our throttle movement. So smaller rate of change in movement, let's say we go from 20% throttle to 30% throttle. That's not gonna allow as much airflow or air mass into the engine if we go from 20% to 100% throttle. That's gonna be a pretty large rate of change in our airflow or air mass entering the engine. And it's gonna require two different amounts of fuel that has to be added. So that's what the acceleration enrichment is gonna allow us to do. So you can think of the traditional modeling that we've talked about here, the fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. That's gonna be applicable to idle conditions where we're not gonna have any kind of air mass or sudden air mass changes or cruising conditions or wide open throttle where our throttle's all the way open. But the transient driving that we're gonna be constantly doing, that's gonna be where acceleration enrichment is gonna be used for. Um, without it, again, we'll have all kinds of drivability problems. So thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't wanna miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.